On any day, U.S. Navy ships can be found virtually anywhere on the world's oceans and seas. Safe navigation can only be assured if crew members understand the correct application of the various navigational charts in use aboard naval ships. For plotting courses and measuring distances, it is necessary for navigational personnel to have a representative picture of the Earth's surface before them. For this purpose, charts and maps are used. If the area covered is mostly water, we use the term chart. Navigational charts contain a wealth of useful information for boat coxswains as well as navigators. Individuals acting as navigators or boat coxswains may use one of three types of charts. Coastal charts, sailing charts, and approach harbor charts. Sailing charts use a small scale. They show a large area. They are used to fix position during approaches to land. They only show generalized shoreline and topographic characteristics. They also depict offshore soundings. You may also encounter coastal charts. These charts are prepared on a larger scale, depict a smaller area, and show more detail than sailing charts. They show channels leading to bays. Coastal charts are frequently used for inshore navigation. The last chart we will discuss is called the approach or harbor chart. Of all the charts that we have discussed, the approach harbor chart has the largest scale and shows the greatest level of detail. Approach harbor charts are used in harbors and bays. They are particularly useful to boat coxswains. Nearly all charts employ color to distinguish various categories of information. Charts you may encounter will come from two sources, the National Ocean Service, the NOS, or the National Image and Mapping Agency, or NEMA. The NOS color system uses five multipurpose colors. These colors may appear solid or shaded on charts. The color blue is used to depict shoal areas. Safe navigation depends on knowing the precise location of areas of shallow water. When you examine individual charts, you may notice two or more shades of blue. This will show water depths of from one to ten fathoms, depending on the chart being used. When reviewing charts, you will note that some areas have been printed in green, these are areas that cover and uncover with tidal changes. The color black is used on most charts for symbols and other printed information. We will be discussing the meaning of the symbols used on these charts in a few moments. Yellow or a gold tint is used to depict land areas. Your chart will also contain markings in purple color. This will depict the compass rows, channel markers and buoys, caution and danger symbols, and notes. White is considered to be the uncolored portion of a chart. It shows deep water areas, three fathoms and over, or the preferred channel. The exact markings will depend on the chart being used. Charts which originate with NEMA are different in one respect. Gray, or a screen black, is used to denote land areas. On a harbor chart, this includes the title of chart. This title block information is placed where it does not interfere with other information. It will include information about title, date of surveys, datum for soundings. Elsewhere on the chart, you will find other valuable printed information. This information is normally printed in the land areas. This information will include notes of caution, title information, and references to anchorage areas. Other important information that will be found on charts will include the true and magnetic course aids to navigation. General information on the area in which you are operating the boat will also be provided. The water depth where you will be operating is essential information for boat coxswains. Numbers indicating water depth are placed throughout the water area. Depths are usually marked at mean lower low water and given in feet, fathoms, or meters. Your chart will plainly state the units of measurement used on that particular chart. That information can be found under the title of the chart and around the border. Other information that is vital to the safe navigation of the boat is contained on the chart in the form of symbols. Symbols indicate the presence of a certain feature or object at the location shown on the chart. Symbols and abbreviations used on the NOS and NEMA charts are standardized. 
they include prominent landmarks, navigational aids such as lights, buoys, and day marks, dangers such as rocks, wrecks, and obstructions, and visual ranges used to follow a channel track. One of the principal uses of charts involves locating your precise location on the surface of the world's oceans and seas. Every spot on Earth is located at the point of intersection between a meridian and a parallel. Every point is describable in terms of latitude and longitude. Lines of latitude, or parallels, run east to west. They are measured in degrees, north or south, from the equator. They run from zero degrees at the equator to 90 degrees at each of the poles. For that reason, any statement of latitude must be referred to as north or south. Longitude lines, or meridians, run north and south, but are measured in degrees east or west of the prime meridian. The prime meridian is at the zero degrees point. Longitude lines extend in either direction to a maximum of 180 degrees from the prime meridian. Any statement of longitude must be referred to as east or west. Measuring distance is one of the principal uses of charts. This task is accomplished with the aid of a pair of dividers. You will find distance scales in yards, miles, or meters printed in the chart margins. Distances can also be measured using the latitude scales at either side of the chart. To accomplish this task properly, you must remember several important facts. One degree of latitude equals 60 minutes. Each minute equals one mile. Therefore, one mile can be divided into 60 seconds. When measuring distances, you always use the latitude scales. A symbol called the compass rose appears at various places on charts. It is used to transfer and measure course direction. The compass rose has an outer scale used with true bearings or angles. There is also an inside scale which is employed with magnetic bearings or angles. The center of the compass rose is used to compensate for variations. These can be annual increases or decreases. Direction is measured on a chart with a pair of parallel rulers. You will use a magnetic compass in order to steer your boat. You must learn to compute your magnetic course from the true course displayed on the chart. To determine the compass course, you need to have a deviation correction table for your boat. This correction, when added to the variation, will give you the total correction to apply to the true course displayed on the chart. In this way, you can lay out a true course on any harbor chart and determine the correct compass course. A vital step in the safe navigation of any vessel is the proper use of charts. Mastery of the techniques we have reviewed today is of critical importance to every sailor in the fleet. Helmsman, what course are you steering? Steering course 090, checking course 095. Thank you.